limit of functions. First, we take one example where I have a graph of a function, call it f of x. And if you look at carefully, at negative 2, the function has some issue here. And then at 3 also. So we want to examine the limit and value of the function close to those points. So first you see what happens to negative 2 plus. So negative 2 is here, plus meaning is little right side. So you basically here. And the value of the limit is 2. So you write here, 2. Next you see 2 minus, negative 2 minus, I'm sorry. So negative 2 is here, little on this side. So it's still there, which is also 2. Then immediately we say, when x approaches to negative 2, that limit is 2. So limit exists, and also you can see what is the value of the function. See, there's a solid dot here, which is 4. So you can say f of negative 2 is 4. The next point I have at 3. So when I say 3 minus, so I'm here, which is, you can say negative 4, according to the graph. So that one is negative 4. When I'm going 3 plus, I'm a little here, and that value goes here, which is negative 5. Since I have right hand limit and left hand limit different, then I say the limit does not exist. Now the value of the function at 3, you have a solid dot here, which is negative 4. We can also talk about the continuity of this function. At a negative 2, the function has removable discontinuity because if we define again the function, this point to just move here, then it is a continuous at negative 2. But in this case, you have a jump. So this function doesn't have continuity at 3, and this, in this case, it is a jump discontinuity. We take now another example where we want to find the limit of this function algebraically. So limit x approaches 44 and you have this one. So if you plug direct just to test what happens. Square root of 44 plus 5 minus 7 over 44 minus 44. So you can see this one is 7 minus 7 over 44 minus 44, which is like 0 over 0 form. So that means we understand that in this function, I have a hole on the graph at 44, so limit we can find. So what we do next, we write now the conjugate. So take the square root of x plus 5 plus 7, square root of x plus 5 plus 7. Now when you do the algebraic simplification, we already know the conjugates, this minus this, this plus this, you can use a formula like a square minus b square type. So which is coming from a minus b times a plus b. So we can just say this is square, which is x plus 5, and then 7 is square root 49. And then I have here x minus 44 times 1 over, that one we have simplified, so this one will stay, x plus 5 plus 7. Now if you look at here, x plus 5 minus 49, which is actually x minus 44, x minus 44, they will cancel out. When you replace here, 44 for x, you get 44 plus 5 plus 7, so which is 1 over 7 plus 7 is 1 over 14. You are done for this. Take example number 3. You have a rational type form in the numerator. So if you plug your limit x goes to 0, then you get 0 over 0 form again. That means I have limit, so I need to do some algebraic work. And what we do here, uh, simplify the numerator. When you have 4 over a plus x minus 4 over a, I can just write a times a plus x, which is the common denominator concept. I also use like this one, multiply together, and then multiply this and this over 
a then a plus x now 4a 4a will cancel out and finally you are getting limit goes to 0 x in the top I get negative 4x over a times a plus x sometimes you can see in the question they write age here doesn't matter whatever it is given you just work on it now what happens to this one here show you on the other side so I have the top portion is negative 4x over a times a plus x times now this one like x over 1 it will go like this it will flip x x cancelled out so you are getting this one as limit x goes to 0 negative 4 over a and then a plus x now when I replace x by 0 I get negative 4 over a times a so you get negative 4 over a square that's your final result for this limit thank you